With all the cinematic heft of the please silence your cell phones now reel and all the cultural sensitivity of the mask of Fu Manchu, the new film Audacity demonstrates that Ray Comfort is a raging dick and if there was true justice in the world he'd have to spend the rest of his life passing poisonous jellyfish through his urethra. I have seen children have more fun watching their dogs get euthanized than I had watching this miserable piece of hate speech. And keep in mind that most of the time, those kids had no idea I was about to kill their dog. Now, under normal circumstances, we try to give Eli at least a month's worth of recovery time after watching a movie as criminally ridiculous as See Me Dance. But when Ray Comfort writes and produces an anti-gay propaganda film that reminds Christians that it's their biblically prescribed duty to tell every gay person they meet that God will burn them in hell for all the butt-fucking, well, those just ain't normal circumstances. So, Eli, welcome back, sir. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for joining us again so soon. Oh, I'm so happy to be... I... When this, I forget, this got pointed out to all of us simultaneously on Twitter, and I squeal. I was in a public place, and I squealed with joy, because <laughs> I've always been like, oh, you know, I should talk about the banana van video, but like, when are we gonna get a chance? Right, like, there's so right. much shit out there, and we've talked about like, you know, can we do a two minute thing where he's just like, right, right, we didn't just fuck while the camera was off, and this was just so. It was like he heard my prayers. <laughs> If my prayers to Ray Comfort came true. Oh, my God. So, okay, so now tell me, where does this movie, and, and both of you guys, please, where does this rank in the pantheon of the worst things that you've ever seen? And please, include roadkill and defecations in your calculus here. <laughs> I'm going to put it right at the top. Best movie we've seen by far. Just fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go with, so, you know, I, a couple of years ago, my dad died, and I was kneeling by his coffin uh, a, a, after he had passed away, and I was just sort of at the depths of despair, and then I saw this movie, and now, comparatively, it's actually a much better experience, so in a way, I owe Ray Comfort a lot <laughs> from this. I actually did put my dog to sleep, and I have to tell you, I will choose that, and I would put it. I would put my current dog to sleep right now. I will snap its neck on Skype over the. Each of these podcast listeners will get to hear the crunch of a one-year-old pug's neck as it turns 360 degrees, rather than listen to Ray Comfort slowly make people uncomfortable. In a YouTube montage. Oh my God! So like, because yeah, I was thinking that should be the ranking of of this movie instead of like one to five stars. It should be like one to ten euthanized puppies. Like, how many puppies would you rather kill than watch this movie? Right. It's like a what would you do for a Klondike bar, but in reverse. <laughs> right. What would you do in order to not watch this movie? Would you kill your dad? Would you take that gun and kill your dad right there? Or would you watch Ray Comfort? confuse people by asking them to read passages out of a Bible and then pretend that they had agreed with it, even though they had just read it out loud because that's what he asked him to do. Right. <laughs> These are your words now. Count. No, I was just reading the thing that you put in front of me. And yeah, no, oh my God, this was so, and, and really like the insanity of this movie started right away. Okay. Cause like, okay, I had to buy this fucking thing. I had to give, I bought it too. We paid for this 40 fucking dollars. We've put into the pocket of this hate monger in order to do this goddamn review. And right away. And of course, when you order it, it also says, would you like to give us more money too? Because that's what Jesus would want. But the, my my first laugh at this was when when you go to the order screen. Okay, so this this tells you the audience we're dealing with here. You cannot order this movie with a PayPal account, and you can't order this movie with with Bitcoin. That is not an option. But you can order it with a goddamn personal check or you, money order. Yeah, you can send them a money order like right. a cowboy who robbed a bank. <laughs> You can't use a check at fucking Denny's. If but you, you want, you can pay us through Pony Express. We'll take Pony Express. That's all fine. Yeah. If you want to trade us in chickens, we'll take some chickens. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. You want to give me your daughter for 45 minutes? Promise not to tell the police. That's fine. Send you an MP3 of this here movie. Yeah. Pay Smart. however you want to. Just none of that fancy electronic stuff, because that's the work of the devil. Yep. That must be it. Oh, shit. Oh, and I love it. the other The other great thing. The next laugh I got off of this movie is after I downloaded it and I saw the fucking runtime. This is yeah. a 49-minute movie. Yeah, I have I have farted in elevators for longer than this movie's runtime. I've just sat there... And the people in the elevator enjoyed it more, sir. Oh, no question. Again, which would you rather? <laughs> would you rather have me 
crack out of another. I'm sorry. I made myself some homemade nachos last night, and apparently everything involved was about two weeks after the expiration date. Now, you can either stay in this elevator for another 53 minutes, or I can put on a movie where a schizophrenic Australian assaults black teenagers at a music festival. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you go ahead and crack him out there, you know? <laughs> just, just lie rip in the uh, resting. Brother, rip away. <laughs> Get yourself in downward dog, and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna breathe through my mouth for the next 50 minutes. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Oh God, this fuck! All right, so I guess we got it. We eventually got to get started. It it was interesting to me that this movie story had the um the immobile version of the see me dance opening, more or less. Yeah, it was all like, it was a it was it was a, a lower budget version of a car chase than we've already seen. Yes. One of the trends that we've seen here on the Scathing Atheist movie reviews is just less and less budget as the day goes by. Yes. I expect in the next one to just see a person carrying a cardboard cutout being like, oh no, I'm being chased! I'm being chased! This is totally a car! It's totally a car! Don't pan out too far! God damn it, Steve, I said don't pan out too far! Oh, here I am inside a car! <laughs> Yeah, no, they, they did have the budget to break a window in this one. That was about the limit of what they could afford to do. I, I would bet any amount. I'm not a rich man. I would bet all of my worldly possessions that someone was just like, you can break my car window. You can do it. I don't care. For Jesus? Sure. It'd be great. And that guy's just wa wa driving around yep. with a garbage bag over his window for the rest of the month just being like, I did a good thing. Good for me. It's so one of his one of his backers exactly. Yeah, um, yeah I got Obita in the back. Um, yeah. All right, so so that's actually actually the opening of this movie. We see the 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 chick from Prayer of the Roller Boys. She's sitting in her car, um, talking on the phone, and um, the, the poor man's Michael Chiklis runs up to the window and starts banging. And she starts screaming. He breaks the window, and that scene is over. Eventually, yeah. I we thought come back that to was him. Michael Chiklis for a while, and I was like, wow, <laughs> the shield really went downhill. <laughs> right. <laughs> This is rough. Come on, Mike. You can do better than this. <laughs> Everyone do can do work. better than this. <laughs> yeah, well, and speaking of stage work, that's the oh. next thing we get to in the film. Now it's time for comedy! <laughs> no, this, it isn't. <laughs> this was my favorite part of the movie, because I had a great realization during this, is that this must be what comedy is when you can't talk about anything because you're a fucking crazy person, right. right? You can't talk about, like, dating or sex or mm -hmm. life or children or joy. So you just <laughs> have to imitate stuff like a trick dog. So that's the comedy they show. It's just like, and th this one here is Barack Obama, and then he's talking to Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Arnold Schwarzenegger's like, ooh, wow! <laughs> right? Because that's what they talk like. Help me. Help me. I've made a terrible mistake. And I can't escape my own delusions. <laughs> so, like, yeah, because okay, so we start off with this comedian on stage as the credits roll, and this guy is doing impersonations, but and it's but it's just like you say, there's no there's no joke. It's just like this is Arnold Schwarzenegger talking to Barack Obama, and then in an Arnold Schwarzenegger, hey Barack, and then in a Barack Obama voice, hey Arnold, and that's it. And it's it's also a shot at Barack Obama. It's like, uh, you know, yeah, I know, it's a president joke. Joke about the president, am I right? We all fucking hate that guy, am I right? <laughs> it's very clear. It begins with a racist, a slightly racist impersonation of the president. And I'm like, hey, first of all, just just get you all on board. Just so you know, even though we're crazy, we hate Barack Obama, too. <laughs> we're not so crazy that we don't also hate Barack Obama, am I right? Okay, here, watch this white guy do an imitation of him trying to fix the roads because that's what he's doing the, mm -hmm. the impersonation is like i've got to fix the roads and then all schwarzenegger is like let's use a tank and the <laughs> audience reacts like it's louis ck's chewed up right the audience is like i know <laughs> so funny i shat <laughs> it's the fucking worst and then he goes to his like just incredibly racist indian voice or, or whatever he's oh going yeah then, yeah i was about i wrote down 30 seconds of this movie, two terrible moments of full-on racism. Oh, it was so bad. And it was, again, no joke. It's just, boy, those those folks from India sure sound funny when they talk, don't they? And then they yeah, cut it was to just the like, audience guy, the one vaguely Indian guy being like, ah, yeah. that is what we sound like. <laughs> it's funny we because it's stupid. true. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, I called tech support, and they, they don't speak English very well. <laughs> Who's with me on this? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Because <laughs> again, what are you gonna what what possibly could he have to talk about? He's a crazy person. He believes in a talking dead guy. What's he gonna do? Twenty minutes on the MTA? <laughs> 
So we get some bad comedy and really, really bad comedy. This is part one, by the way. We get to go back to that as well. And this is the pro, by the way. This is the seasoned pro comedian. We yeah, this is, the, this is the guy who's taking the younger comedian under his wing. Yes. Yes. Now, and I and I do think that it's an it's also an, another interesting look into Ray Comfort's soul that this is what he finds funny. He saw this guy. There were a bunch of other comedians and impressionists. He saw this guy and he's like, "Oh, that's my guy, right?" Eh. He's real funny. You should see this thing he does. He talks like Barack Obama, but, but you got to understand, he's not Barack Obama. Yeah, <laughs> he's not Barack Obama in the ring. That's that, that threw me at first. I was like, "Oh my God, it's Barack Obama!" How did he get in here? And I tried to try to grade him and wrestle him a little bit. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't him. Wouldn't him. Said so when he turns into other people, it's not a demon. Not a demon inside his brain trying to come out as Barack Obama. Yeah, it's not that. He's just pretending to be another person. Yeah? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me either. But what are you going to do? Back to this talking snake. Send yeah. me some Jew gold. We're making a movie. Yeah, all right. right. So that we Again, the- all of these movies, someone had to say yes. Someone besides <laughs> one crazy bird, they hired cameras mm. and sound guys. Everyone involved in this movie couldn't have been crazy. There aren't that many crazy people, which means there was some sound guy or boom guy just standing there going, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, Dave. Dave, you gotta stop just signing up for everything that's on the boards. You gotta read scripts or something. This is, come on, my name's gonna be a, yes. what's my name for the paperwork? My name is Scissors Mc, <laughs> Power Cord. Literally anything. Just, if you could pay me in cash, I'm gonna go take a crying game-esque shower. <laughs> I mean, honestly, because, yes, like, as bad as this movie is, and I mean this seriously, like, the boom operator, the lighting guys, the gaffers, everybody owes us an apology. Mm. And and I mean that seriously because this is blatant. We haven't gotten to it yet, but this movie is just blatant bigotry from start to finish. And and doesn't hide it. There's no point. I mean, not to – spoiler alert, but at, at no point in this movie does someone go, well, it's not hate because and then says words. They just go, no, no, I don't hate Someone goes, hey, man, you're a fucking bigot. And then the character goes, uh, just looks sad. And we're supposed to be like, oh, you see that? That's not nice to just call someone. The argument this movie makes is when you call us a bigot, it hurts our feelings. Right, right. That's what they want you to take away from this. Is not We don't have a good reason for us to be saying these things, which they fucking don't in a no. movie about why you say these things. They don't provide a single good reason. Never. They do, however, show several times someone being like, hey man, how dare you say that? And the main character being like, I'm <laughs> I was just trying to help you not go to magical hell. <laughs> that really is what we're getting. Okay, so it's like someone trying to tell you not to get your coat out of the closet in case you fall through to Narnia. It's like, thanks man, I got it. Now stop trying to create laws that I can't reach in and get my fucking coat. Right. I get it. You don't have to reach in and get a coat. I'm going to go ahead and snatch my jacket and leave. But Mr. Tumners! Yeah, I get it. Mr. <laughs> Tumners is going to reach out, and grab my wrist, and I'll be trapped in there for three years, have to fight a lion, a witch. I saw, I read all the crazy books that you did. All right, but can you read this passage from Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe? Yes, I can. It doesn't mean I agree with it. Right. <laughs> It says, that, can you read, it says, Lion the Witch. Yeah, I, I, that's what it says. It says lots of things. <laughs> we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Cause, Sorry. Oh my Wait, God. we're here, we're at the Terrible Comedy Club. I want to point out something about this comedy club. This comedy club is so obviously just the rec room of a super church. Right. They make, right. and it never is anything else. It's the same comedy club over and over again. And the tables and chairs they've set around, they, obviously no one who made this movie has ever set their foot inside a comedy club, of course. So it's, it's like half living room and half <laughs> board meeting presentation. Yeah. There's like a giant pull down screen behind them and just the thing that's like, <laughs> comedy! <laughs> Very clearly not based on a person who should ever who has ever seen comedy before. Right, right, exactly. But that is that is really the extent of what we're dealing with. They couldn't afford to shoot comedy in a comedy club with an audience. Like, their budget didn't allow for that, so they had to let some church, or get some church to let them borrow the basement to make it look kind of like a comedy club with no bar. Yeah. That said, 
how amazing would it be if they had tried to put this guy in front of a real audience oh and then just hope that they could have the recording? <laughs> just, so then Arnold Schwarzenegger is like, oh, 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 and someone's just like, I'm going to throw my beer at you, but I want you to know it's because you're terrible. <laughs> I wasn't yeah, so that's not going to work. They killed the first guy. <laughs> well, you know what? They probably tried that first. That's probably somewhere on the cutting room floor. Oh, I want that tape. Right. I want that echoey <laughs> silence tape. I've been to I've been to enough open mics in my life to know that oh, echoey silence when he's just like, oh, I'll get down. <laughs> All right. Probably um, exactly what it sounded like. All right, this is Batman if Next he, joke. he's a rapist. Let's go. <laughs> Knock. Now that we're rolling. Knock. Right. <laughs> All right, so then after the terrible comedy, we meet Peter, who's our hero, and he's an aspiring comedian that just doesn't have the balls to get up in front of people and make jokes. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's just that's Peter's introduction. And then we bamf over and we meet uh, Diana, whose name is not, I think, mentioned until minute four. 49 yeah, of the film. I had no I had idea to, that character had a name. MTP. Yeah, I had no, no idea that character had a name. I, I made it all I was the way just through. like, blonde, blondy, blonde. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I, and when we first meet her, she's sitting at a restaurant having uh, a lunch or whatever with her cardboard two-dimensional friend, and the topic of the discussion seems to be exposition. Yeah, no, they, they talk into the screen like an, it's like a second language film. Like, if this were Muzzy, I'd be like, oh, I get it. They're just <laughs> communicating information. They're just talking about whatever's in front of them. I've, I've, I've done Rosetta Stone. I get right, it. Right. This is like a Rosetta Stone video where they just never include the other language. And I, I remember I wrote down like three times during the scene, why am I watching Small Talk? Because it's just like, oh, how's your salad? You know, it's okay. It's not amazing. And I'd be like, why is this in the movie? Right. This is such a short movie. Why did this not get cut from the fucking movie? And they do, and again, they speak entirely in exposition. Mm -hmm. This is the only way they could have included more exposition in these opening scenes is if Ray Comfort had just sort of stumbled out <laughs> in front of the camera like the fucking Emperor's New Groove llama and been like, all right. Here's the deal. All right, I'm just going to let you in. She's a, she's a lady. Going to be a lady. Call her left. Cut. And then this is a man. Yeah. They're friends. He's a comedian. She's a, she's just a lady. Didn't really think of anything for her. They're going to watch some of my YouTube videos, and you're going to watch them watch my YouTube videos. Doesn't that sound terrible? All right. Back to my crazy mobile. And then he poofs away. That's the only way this could have been more obvious, and it would have been more entertaining. <laughs> this was like being forced to sit down at lunch next to two people I neither know nor care about. It's like, have you ever been in a restaurant and you overhear the conversation of the table next to you? Well, strap on in to Audacity, <laughs> because you get 35 seconds full of action. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh. And then after absolutely nothing happens in that scene, keep in mind, we're about to meet this girl in the very next scene. So right. We don't even have to meet her here. So after nothing happens here, we cut to Peter, uh, who is on his way to work when he looks at the news and they're talking about gay marriage. This is at the four minute and 53 second mark. That's the first time gay marriage comes up. Won't be the mm. last. And I just wanted to point this out. The, the, the announcer on the TV, the last thing he says at the end of the, to close the sequence is, soon each of us will have to respond in our own way to this cultural revolution. And I'm thinking, no, you, you absolutely don't. You can also just not give a shit and shut the fuck up. That's yeah. the other option. Exactly, exactly what I do, by the way. Exactly yeah. what I do. Oh, I'm going to marry a dude. Weird. Okay, cool. I don't, I don't care. Right. Zero cares. Do, am I invited? No? Sad. Yes. <laughs> that's, the extent, that's the extent of my caring about gay marriage. And what's amazing is the news footage, they either A, couldn't find news footage right wing enough in talking about gay marriage <laughs> so they make up their own, or they were trying to be like mysterious, like, oh, how's this character going to feel in this film that comes to you from Living Waters <laughs> Ministry? So it's like, well, there's just like a rainbow flag next to an American flag, and it's like, well... We're all going to figure out how we feel about this. Do we throw up or shit? Am I right? <laughs> I'm on the news right now. Next up, Batman. He raped a bunch of people. I don't know. 
<laughs> What's real news like? I haven't yeah, paid attention right. to anything for 2,000 years. I swear, like, I expected somebody to, like, like open the line in the scene by saying, interior, office, and then, and then throwing out their line. Right, um, exactly. Just Ray Comfort skittling in front of the screen. <laughs> interior, office, all right, yeah, okay. <laughs> would have made everything so much better oh yeah any so they, any change that you made would yeah. have made this movie better so they go so they're at the office and she's sitting there and she's doing that you know maybe it's experience in community theater but there's that there's that person who can't act doing something before another person walks into a shot <laughs> thing kind of acting <laughs> and i can watch it for, eating out of their bowl of cereal <laughs> yeah. right, i could watch it for 95 hours where just this person who cannot act and be in their own skin is just like, and then I cereal and mouth, and cereal and mouth, and cereal, and num, 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 num. I bet this cereal is delicious. And then he walks in and she's like, oh my god, I was alone on camera for like four seconds. <laughs> oh, okay, you don't know, but there's like a pool of urine underneath me from the idea to be alone on the camera. And I was just putting cereal in my face like I'd never eaten before. <laughs> So he comes in and they're chatting and she's like, yeah, how's your day? And they're kind of flirting. Mm -hmm. They're kind of flirting, but I can never tell if anyone's flirting in Christian movies because no one wants to fuck each other. Right. They just right. instantly want to get married and then rape babies back and forth. <laughs> so she so comes and sit down and she goes, oh, what are you looking at that? And he, he, he like gets embarrassed and he goes, oh, just the Bible. Just yeah. like just casually e-reading the Bible. And she acts like he just said... Shit porn. I'm looking at shit porn. Um, yeah, it's everyone underage. in this movie reacts to the word Christian the way normal people react to the word rapist. Right. Like if you can, <laughs> you can play a fun game where you just shout rapist when everyone says Christian, and all the characters on screen react the same because they'd be like, "Oh, I'm actually a rapist," and she's like, "Oh, that's fucking oh, why did you tell me that? Oh, it's hard. You should be in jail. You should be in jail." <laughs> So he, but instead, it's a Christian, and he reacts in a way... And again, we're pretty hardcore atheists. No one ever has told me they're a Christian, and I've been like... Blah, 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 blah. Right. So I just vomited back up my cereal. I didn't realize you were a Christian. <laughs> Don't you realize I know gay people? Pa-pa! Smoke pa! Right. So that's the extent of that scene. And then Peter, who is, by the way, a bicycle delivery man has to haul ass to get somewhere on time because suddenly he's late despite the fact that we've just spent three minutes with him talking about nothing and reading the fucking Bible. Right, talking about nothing. And then there's, of course, the moment where she, he goes, oh, I'm a Christian, and she says, well, you know, my sister is gay. And he's like, oh, what? And again, the only argument this movie makes is it hurts our feelings mm -hmm. when, you, when you talk about the fact that we as a united front have been trying to take away the rights of an organized minority. <laughs> just like <laughs> the only argument they make is just like, well, you could, you could stop picking on us because, you know, just because we want to take away your liberties doesn't mean that we don't have feelings. <laughs> and I'm just like, cry me a fucking river, you right. little bigot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, she goes, so do you believe gay people should be stoned? And he absolutely says nothing like no. He says nothing to correct her and leaves. That's it. Yeah, he doesn't and he drives go, his bike oh, no. straight to a lesbian elevator. Yeah. I totally don't believe that. He goes, well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. No, it's fucking not. Nope. It's zero percent. When someone yes. asks you, it's a fun, moral, handy dandy. You can tattoo this on your ball sack and do an avasna every time you need to check the answer on this one. If anyone asks you, should X be stoned for Y, the answer is no. The answer is always no. This is not a Do tough you question. want to rim someone after they've eaten Indian food? No. Should anyone get stoned for anything they do? No. Right. Except maybe make this movie. <laughs> oh. So after the ambiguous answer to the death to gaze question, he, he, he hauls ass over to make this delivery, and he winds up in an elevator with a couple of lesbians. And, of course, the lesbians can't kiss or do anything too gross to freak out the audience, so they're, they're holding hands. That's how we know people are gay in this movie. They hold they're holding hands. hands, and they're smiling and happy. They are the most likable people in this movie. They really are, yes. <laughs> they are by far the most likable people in this movie. But we're supposed to be like, eh, 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 gross. Right, because... and Peter's like, what are you guys doing? We're lesbians. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. How's your day going? Just munching some carpet and getting <laughs> married to ruin yours. <laughs> Oh, I'm delivering. And then he has he has this struggle mode. He has a Clint yes, Eastwood oh at the end. What's that movie where he kills all those Asians at the end? Where the Asians kill him. Oh, Gran, uh, Gran Torino. Gran Torino. He has a Gran Torino moment, but with a Jesus pamphlet. Right. But, but he never exactly. draws. Right, exactly. He, said, he well, never draws, I, just like I... Gran Torino. <laughs> <laughs> he just sits there and he's like, eh, do I? Do I save these people from their happy day of marriage? Yeah. Do I ruin these people's happy day? Right. I don't know. On the one hand, I want to. And on the other hand, I know how effective Jesus pamphlets are. <laughs> so he has that moment. And then this is crazy. So they exit the elevator and they walk past a guy who is obviously disgusted by mm -hmm. the fact that they're lesbians. Now, the movie posits that this is a bad character. The only reason this guy would be disgusted by the fact that they're lesbians is that he's a fucking Christian. Right. So this guy, and we're about to find out what he fucking does about it, right. but, and oh, I know gosh. we're going to get to that in a second, yes. but he's a Christian. Let's just remember, that guy who walks by and goes, mm -hmm. oh, that's yeah. a Christian. That's a good guy in this movie. He's on the side of this movie, yes. and they can't portray him well because that is a gross thing to be. There's no positive way to show someone who looks at people in love and goes, Bleh. Yeah. <laughs> so he gets trapped in the elevator, and I prayed for the first time in 16 years that <laughs> it would fall and he would die, and this had accidentally been caught on camera, and the actor actually just got crushed. But it wasn't. It was just a movie. So he's trapped in the elevator. And this is, again, this is metaphor for grandma. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in an elevator. I'm trapped in an elevator. I wouldn't want anyone else to be in this experience, especially if they were gay. And this elevator were leading them to hell. You got it, grandma? All right, I got it. So he makes his way out of the elevator and... So here's a fucking, another crazy moment. He talks to the guy, and the guy's like, yeah, don't leave that elevator. Someone could come by and get hurt. And he's like, I gotta deliver this package, so I'll just write a sign and stick it on there with gum. No, motherfucker! You wait by the broken elevator! You're supposed to be a Christian. Is, I mean, is there a package guy who's going to be like, you're, you're like, you're like, oh, sorry, this is a couple of minutes late. I had to make sure no one died in the elevator in your building that you work in, the, the elevator that you take to get home. And the guy's going to say, well, fuck you. I'm not paying for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who does he work for? J. Jonah Jameson? Come on, I'm getting, this package is 12 minutes late. <laughs> I don't care. I Get me, get me. This is pictures of Spider-Man. <laughs> fucking crazy so he sticks a gum sign on there because he's a fucking moron and then again evil guy from before who is on the side of the movie he's a good he's a good guy in the movie kinda <laughs> takes the sign off and lets the lesbians die murders yes. them yes. Murders, he murders them bad guy from breakfast club murders them he does it because he's a christian we have no reason to suspect that this gentleman is just, like, a crazy murderer. He looks at them and goes, they're gay, that's gross, I'm gonna murder them. Yes, yes. So he takes the, and now, first of all, keep in mind that we've got a, 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 a malfunction with the elevator that's like, it stops and the doors won't open, and the next time someone gets on it, it's gonna plummet to their, they're gonna plummet to their death. I don't know how this happens with an elevator, but it does. <laughs> So our hero Peter comes walking back around to, to well, where the doors are attached to big scissors, and so oh, when you push them open, they <laughs> snip the top, and it falls. I mean, I'm no scientist, but right, I'm pretty right. sure it's yes. like a, it's like the Incredible Machine. If you had that game when you were a kid, it's that. Yeah, it's, exactly, it's exactly. The elevator. White Spy had been right. through there earlier, <laughs> uh, or something along those lines. So, so Peter comes back around, and he sees that his danger deadly elevator sign has been removed by the Christian who is slightly more bigoted than him. And they actually go into this slow motion, six million dollar man run, and he goes, "No!" As they're, I'm not making that up. That actually happens as yeah, and the they elevator. Go, Love me! Yes, and they fall to the bottom of the elevator yes. and die. And you just hear the fucking sound effect. You don't see anything. The elevator doors close, and you hear two lesbians screaming, and not in a good way. And then, so you and... don't know it wasn't in a good way. <laughs> you didn't watch this movie the way I did. <laughs> Two, two lesbians in an elevator going down. I guess I, I, I missed it entirely. So, and, and then 
Peter wakes up and it's all a dream, and we have no idea how much of what we've seen now is a dream. There's no cue the whatsoever. Whole movie. No. I wrote, it was all a dream. What a weird dream. What a terrible movie. <laughs> right. So, now, the comedy bit at the beginning, I guess, where he's at the comedy club, maybe that's not supposed to be part of the dream, but maybe it is because... They talk later about how the girl wasn't there and she was supposed to be there or whatever. But at least to the part where he was at the office with the girl was a dream. So we're supposed to believe that this guy dreamed that he woke up, tied his shoes, watched the news, went to work, flirted kind of with a girl, uh, called her lesbian a, 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 a front or a lesbian sister an affront to God, went to like went to make a delivery. All of this stuff in in the in the span of a dream like so i'm saying to myself has ray comfort never dreamed i mean i understand not knowing what a real comedy club looks like or what atheists actually talk about when they eat or what gay people are like but i mean the guy has to have had a god day he knows they don't work like that doesn't he he's i mean here's the thing ray comfort's a crazy person if you told me that ray comfort had eight hour long narrative dreams, I'd be like, oh, sure. Do you know he also believes that a talking snake existed? And people would be like, oh, he believed in a talking snake? That's fucking weird. Eight hours of narrative dreaming, that's just quirky. But he thinks a talking snake is real. That guy's a fucking nutbag. And you know what? That's probably what drove him crazy. If every night I closed my eyes and then had to get dressed and tie my shoes and watch the news and drive to fucking work and fucking take my morning shit and eat my breakfast, and flirt with the coffee girl at Starbucks, and then I'd wake up and have to do it all over again, I'd eventually be like, all right, Sip, this book here is real, and I'm going to lose it. I'm going to go right down the hole into insanity. Come on, Ray, here we go. It's a magical journey. <laughs> so upon having this horrible dream, whatever, Peter wakes up, and he decides he needs to figure out God's trying to send him a message in really, really obvious metaphor that gets explained repeatedly through the movie to Grandma, um, that right. he needs to learn how to tell gay people that they're going to hell correctly. So he Googles right. that. Yes. So he, go he, he Googles how to speak to, and then he pauses, uh -huh. and I wrote, fish. No, no, come on, stay focused, gay people. <laughs> <laughs> you just really want to be Aquaman. <laughs> Just a fish jumping out of the water next to a gay couple. You guys are going to hell! <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't fish. He actually backs up to speak and Googles how to Faggots. witness to gay people. And of course, what does he get when he Googles how to berate fags? He gets half of the movie. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> He gets half of the movie in montages because they were too lazy to fill out a 49-minute movie with all movie. Right. Right. So now we get the first of three Ray Comfort YouTube man-on-the-street montages. Recycled material yes. montages. Yeah. And they are they are real rough. Because here's the thing. They, they fall into – it's – all of these YouTube on, it's interesting to see what Ray Comfort sees these as and then what we know them to be. And living in New York City, it's very clear because I've gone through that experience. When a crazy person comes up and talks to you, but they're not crazy in the very first minute. Right. So you talk to them like a person and then you realize it. That's what all of these YouTube montages are. It's all people realizing they're talking to a crazy person. They're obviously at a music festival or in the park. They're doing something. And someone comes up and goes, what do you think of gay marriage? And they all, because they're New Yorkers or wherever they're from, go, yeah, gay marriage is great. We're all in favor of gay marriage, being gay. Is, you're born being gay. And then he starts to ask crazier and crazier questions. So what this actually is footage of is people getting uncomfortable and trying to end the conversation conversation right. by agreeing as quickly as possible yes. and i've done it homeless guys are like hey man what time is it 4 43 sure is hot out there yeah it's pretty hot you know it's because they put airplanes full of chemicals and those chemicals and i'm like yeah man totally <laughs> right Woo! it's it's like if that guy made a movie to prove that we all believed in airplanes full of chemicals just like now this is me talking to a gentleman who was just trying to eat lunch at work and you can see he definitely agrees yep Yep, yep please airplanes go full of chemicals. Wow, this elevator's taking a while. <laughs> That's all these things are. And it's just, it's one of these, it's so clearly people not having the 
the the ability to communicate to him that they disagree and are uncomfortable because uh-huh. they'll be like, yeah, so you know, all right, I want you to read this. It says here, uh, Spider Man, Spider Man <laughs> does whatever a spider can. Yeah. So would you say would you say you can do whatever a spider can? Yeah. Would you? And they're like, oh, I mean. Yeah, obviously, like, according to that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Spider-Man can do whatever a Spider-Man can. Yeah? But you're not Spider-Man, are you? Yeah? You're not Spider-Man? Well, I mean, nobody's Spider-Man. Oh, but he says right here in this comic book. He says right here in this comic book. Can you read that? Um, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Would you sing it? Uh, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. I actually, I gotta go meet my friend. Just, just read the comic book. Does whatever a spider can. And there's, there's a, especially, there's a fantastic moment, and it comes a little later in the montage, but it's an especially telling moment, and we've all done this, the congratulations for being a monster moment, where you're having a debate or a conversation with someone, and they say crazy shit the entire time. And at the end, you want to compliment them, but all of their ideas are so terrible, that you just say, thank you for being so, uh, kind, and right. <laughs> I really appreciate your thoughtfulness. And this one clip keeps coming back. It's a gay woman, and she goes, I really appreciate the, the you know, the loving, um, kind way you've put this. And what she means is, thanks for not screaming fag at me. Right, right. Because right. <laughs> that's the only good thing she can think of in that horrible interaction she had at Ray Comfort. Is him just not being like, get in here! You're a witch! I'm gonna ban you! I'm gonna ban you with a cigarette! Give me! Give me! So she's like, so she's doing the like gold star for not trying to bite my foot. Yeah, right. She's like, eh. and they show it through the movie like she has changed, like she is no longer gay. Right. Yes. Basically, that's the closest anybody comes to saying, yeah, whatever, whatever. And then he like acts like, see, I just, I just talked my person out of being gay. Now they're straight and they'll take the dig like they're supposed to. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, it's, we will leave. We're going to yes, get some yeah, dick right now. Yes, go away. Exactly. Totally. Oh, just, yeah, I'm, I'm just going go to go buy myself some dick at the dick store. As soon as I'm done talking to you, just go away. You first, though. You have to leave. <laughs> Yeah, you have to go first, and then I'll get a right on that. I really will. And and see now, up until this point, this has just been (laughs) another really poorly put together, stupid, horrible movie. But when you start getting to the the YouTube clips, this is where I stopped having fun. You know, because this, like, it was still were you having a lot of fun uh, until this point. Well, I mean, like, I have (laughs) fun with the murder part in the elevator. Yeah, that that was hilarious. But (laughs) like, no, but I mean, I have fun with bad. Is that you could jerk off to? But yeah, exactly. But this part, you could you put two you put two lesbians in an elevator. I'm jerking off. It's really uncomfortable for them. When they're in the elevator with me, but hell, you know, there, there, are, there are, we, have, we all have needs. That's why you scream, this isn't learn. about you, at them. <laughs> right. <laughs> so they understand. <laughs> this is even worse than when Ray Comfort came up to us the other day. <laughs> it's your message, message so, boy. No, no, it's not. It's but not no, worse than No, it Comfort. really, yeah, like so every go one ahead. of them would have watched me jerk off in an elevator rather than continue that conversation, <laughs> man or woman. So, but, but that's, but that's kind of like where I realized, okay, this movie has gone way beyond you know, the kind of, like, like in persecution, right? They were obviously talking about gay marriage and gay stuff, but they, they were, like, kind of skirting around it and being at least somewhat culturally sensitive to it. This movie threw all that shit out, in the, out of the window and just became blatant fucking hate speech right about at this time. Just went on it. They were just, like, pulled no punches and all about it. And the thing is, all of the points in the YouTube montages, which, by the way, let's just appreciate the fact that Ray Comfort made a movie about people watching his YouTube yes. videos. How fucking crazy do you there's have to be? There's actually a goddamn spot in this movie, right about here, actually, where there's a, just a, a series of montages of clips of people saying that Ray Comfort makes sense. Right? Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. That actually happens in the fucking movie. He went out and made a movie so that he could pay actors to say that he makes sense. Right, and all out of context, too. Yes. So he could be like, excuse me, is that the L-I-R-R? Yeah, yeah, no, that's it. That makes sense. Great. Okay, good. <laughs> Wonderful. Go there. Right. I mean, so it, his first point, this first thing that we come across in the YouTube montage, the first thing he wants to drive home is that gay people are born that way, but you're also born to be a fornicator. Mm-hmm. And so, again, all of the points that he makes in this movie could be defeated by a toddler. Because he's like, yeah, fornicated, yeah. I wanted to fornicate as a kid, yeah, didn't you? <laughs> didn't you? Uh-huh. And there's the one guy who's like, wow, man, you really changing my mind right now. I would love for you to leave. 
I would just love for you to leave. Right. <laughs> oh, my mind is so totally changed. If you were to leave, I don't know how much more changed my mind could get if you were to go far, far away from me and let me finish my, my lunch alone where you are not. <laughs> Oh, God, it was so fucking bad. But don't worry, we'll get back to more Ray Comfort YouTube in a minute. But now Peter, armed with this Ray Comfort information, goes back to work. Now, keep in mind that we knew this was a dream sequence. We, ha we have no idea how much was a dream sequence, so we still don't know really if the conversation he had with her was part of the dream. We have no reason to believe it was, but apparently it was. So he comes up to her, and this is how he opens the conversation with her. Uh -huh. Do you have a dyke sister? Is your sister a lesbian? Yeah. Because I dreamed that she was. Yeah, I dreamed your sister was gay. And yes. let me tell you, I've used that as an opening line a lot of times. <laughs> it does not go over well. Mace takes forever to get out of your eyes, guys. Just listen to, e listen to Eli and learn from my mistakes. I dreamed your sister was gay is a real bad way to open a conversation. But not uh, learn in from my not this case, movie. no. No, uh, it no works not very here. well. She, here she's just like, she doesn't even mention that's a weird question. She's just right. like, oh, no, I don't even have a sister. Yeah. I have a brother. Yeah. And it's not just like, oh, I'm sorry, that was a fucking crazy thing to ask me. What? <laughs> right. <laughs> Nothing like that. She's like, no, no, no. And then he's like, cool, you want to watch some, uh, some, some gay bashing with me on YouTube? Now, like, any job in the fucking world would fire you for, like, forcing this shit on a person at work. Oh, no question. I mean, does she work at the bicycle delivery company? At Cybix? That has a really big conference room with an enormous yeah. table for their bike messenger service. Yeah. Right, exactly. For their for them to rest in for between bike team. messages. Yeah. Well, I think her whatever. job is to sit on a couch and drink coffee, if, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm taking it incorrectly. So she could work pretty much anywhere, I guess. Right, exactly. So basically, that's how this movie, like, he, he wants to cleverly weave his YouTube videos in. So basically what he does is he has the guy Google how do I hate gays correctly and find YouTube videos of Ray Comfort. And then in the movie, he goes to this girl that he's flirting with says, hey, do you have a dyke sister? And she says, no. He's like, cool, watch some Ray Comfort YouTube videos with me. And then we get another montage of Ray Comfort with these same four poor fucking people on the streets. Right. And in their second conversation, again, she says to him, she says, doesn't the Bible also say you should stone adulterers? Like, doesn't the Bible say a bunch of crazy shit? And he goes, I think there's more to it than that. Which he never answers. He's no. just like, there's more to it than that. Goodbye. Right. We're no, done talking about that here. now. Yeah. I can't see you. La, la, la. <laughs> and they kept it in the movie. They kept the question. Again, another trend of these movies. They, someone, a character asks a question that is valid and interesting. And the other person goes, mm-hmm. Funny you should say that because poof. Yeah, right. <laughs> Huzzah. Jingly keys. Jingly keys. <laughs> Just don't put it in the movie. If you don't have a good answer, don't put it in a movie. When my girlfriend comes home and I'm hanging from my neck by a belt, I will try and explain it. I just, I just don't Carry talk on. about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If she doesn't ask, you don't offer it. You finish yeah, up and it's you move like on. It's like Ray doesn't, yeah, exactly. It's like Ray doesn't understand that he this controls isn't about what you. everyone <laughs> says in this movie. Lock he eyes controls with me. what all the characters say. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was moving around from the asphyxiation uh, orgasm a little too quickly. I have bad habit. It's it's better oh, to go too quick, too quick quickly. than too fast you can't on the, move or too, too slow quickly. on that one. All right, so You'll pass out as you stand up. Now, exactly. Now, in this second YouTube montage, this was the point in the movie where I just grabbed my pencil like a child grabs a crayon and wrote "fuck this asshole" across my notes because okay, at one point, one of the people he's talking to says, "Well, if God hates people being gay so much." Why did he make me gay? This is Ray's answer, and I went back and wrote this down. This is verbatim Ray's answer. The exact same reason he made adulterers, fornicators, thieves, and murderers. Those were his exact words. Being gay is like stealing and murdering. That's yep. what he's saying. To a person who'd already told him he was fucking gay. Like, that was like the third point where I had to just stop this movie. This movie was 49 minutes long. It took me three and a half fucking hours to watch it. I, I liked it because the react, just the expression on the guy's face as Ray is saying it. Again, there, there is no worse cinematic choice if you want to train an army of bigots than to watch someone's feelings get hurt 
as you express your fucking crazy opinions. Because there's no, there's nothing that's going to discourage people more than watching that poor fucking guy's face just crumple as Ray Comfort's like, yeah, you just like a murderer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you just like a murderer. And he's like, oh, you're a fucking nutbag, aren't you? Oh, my you're just God. A, but why do you get a vote? Why do you get a vote and I get a vote? We, there would be a tie right now if one of us was a murderer. If they took a vote of who, whether or not we were a murderer, it'd be a fucking tie if we both got a turn. Yeah. You fucking nutbag. Oh my it's god. The, it's just fuck. And again, everyone, everyone in these YouTube videos is so is like, oh well, there goes my phone. <laughs> What's that? Oh, my Batman has got to go to harm friends. Granted, to clock trip. <laughs> Get up in him. Yeah, sorry, man. Gotta go. <laughs> Looks like I'm having a stroke. what a day. Or maybe they could use the excuse that Diana uses when um once once she's watched this this uh video montage, she has a question about God. Another one that they don't bother actually answering. She turns to him and she says, "Well, okay, I have a question for you about this whole Jesus nonsense. My brother has real bad cancer. Why would God do that?" Yeah, so weird. Just one more thing before you go, Peter. It's, it's not a big thing, but I hate God so much. <laughs> so much. <laughs> Since you you're that? claiming to be an expert I on God, I, I have some questions about uh, why we killed my brother. <laughs> right. I love so, the idea, too, that he has real bad cancer. That's how she refers to it. It's like, what kind, what kind of cancer, cancer do I have, Doc? Real bad, uh, Dave. Sorry. Real. It's, Again. it's real bad. <laughs> Again, that's what happens when you're a fucking moron. Who never goes to the doctor. I guarantee you they were like, what kind of cancers are they? Well, there's, there's the real bad kind, right? That's the one that kills you. All right, great. That's what we want. That's what we want. Conversation yeah. over. <laughs> the key here is really that people watch a bunch of people on YouTube be made uncomfortable as I get a microphone as close to their face as possible without getting arrested. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he got arrested at some point in the filming of that. Okay, oh. so now we move on to pr probably... Oh, his answer, by the way, to that is, I'm sorry to hear that. I'll pray for yes. your brother. <laughs> yes. Which is basically like saying, you know, hey, you know, your um, your friend Dave keeps uh, beating up my sister, keeps beating her up. Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm real sorry to hear that happened. I will, uh, I'll ask him real nice to stop. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, please stop it. Come on, Come buddy. On. I'll even do the Cut hand motion. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Basically, he gives her a fuck to find no answer. And then he moves on. And we get this very awkward, poorly put together, like, first year film project scene in a, in a convenience store. Oh, God, I love this so much. Gracious clerks. Awesome. Yes. All yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is going to get lost if we don't talk about it. But as he's getting out of the car... He's like, come on, man, tell me a joke. Mm -hmm. And he's like, all right, <laughs> knock, knock. And he does interrupting starfish. Yes. But it is because, again, no one has a sense of humor because they're all fucking schizophrenics. He reacts to interrupting starfish like he's being smothered by an ocean. <laughs> he's like interrupting starfish. Oh, my God, get it off me. Get it off me. Oh, I thought I was never going to. Oh, you oh, won't it's believe a real this, starfish. Peter. There was a starfish, <laughs> and it flew out of nowhere, covered my face, and I couldn't breathe. It's like a forty-five minute reaction to interrupting starfish, which everyone then then laughs to again, laughs like it's the funniest thing they've ever fucking heard. And then he goes in. If I saw two full-grown men doing that, I would be afraid. I'd be like, right. "Oh, those are crazy people." I'm not. I, we can get gas next time or run out of gas and get towed. I just don't want to be in a building with that nightmare of a person. I love it, too. It's the professional comedian has never uh, encountered the interrupting starfish joke. And, and so anyway, so they go into the store, and here's our cast of characters in the store. We have very obvious gay couple. They're holding hands. Um, mm -hmm. Straight couple. And the guy with the words armed robber tattooed across his forehead, stalking back and forth in the potato chip aisle, looking menacingly. Because right, exactly. you know how you like to browse a bit before you knock over the liquor store. You know, you and know. again, I want to give this credit where credit is due. They did not make this character black. Let's just give yeah. credit. Of the movies we've watched so far, this was not the one black character in the movie. So right, let's give right. credit where credit is yeah, due. There were no However, black characters they do dress movie. him up. 
like a homeless person. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. They're very clearly. Again, they're just like he could have. He could have been dressed as Yosemite Sam, <laughs> and they would have been like, yeah, no, that's a little too subtle. <laughs> We broaden this slightly. We want him to look dangerous. <laughs> Again, just Ray Comfort crawling out in front of the camera. You see that? See that? He's a sketchy fella. What's he up to? He's the fairy. About to find out. Tune in. Tune in. Yeah. Yeah. Would have been so much better. So, of course, he pulls out his gun and just starts randomly running around saying, you know, get on the floor or put up your hands or something. And and the comedian buddy is sitting outside, you know, still recovering from the interrupting starfish joke. He's got a hitch in his side, I guess, or whatever, and sees what's happening. So he calls 911, and then he texts Diana just out of the fucking blue. Everybody. He texts everybody. It's a mass text. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, he texts yeah, everybody he text. knows. And he says, Peter's in trouble. Everyone pray for him. Now you're standing right outside while your I'm friend not gonna help. is I'm about gonna yeah help. exactly exactly. Yeah, you guys you have not been seen by the arm. You have not been seen by the armed robber. Right. You have informed the police, but you're going to do the second most important task, which is of course to tell everyone who knows him to pray. Get a yes. mass prayer going down. Yeah. What First if that had do. gone badly? That's the question. <laughs> what is the next text he sends if someone blows the back of Peter's skull through the front of his face? Right, who wasn't is it just praying like, right? What the fuck? Somebody it. fucked now, it up. Okay, everyone, I'm not mad, but if you didn't pray, <laughs> I want you to let me know, because we really need to get on to this guy. This is why we created the phone prayer tree. <laughs> this is what the kind of thing that happens when everyone's not praying. Diane, what were you doing? Oh, she was praying. Okay, Mike, what were you? Oh, Mike, you were jerking off? Well, Mike, you just negated Diane, didn't you? You were touching yourself like the devil while Diane was praying, and then someone put a 45 millimeter bullet through the front of our friend Peter's face. <laughs> but luckily for us, it doesn't go that way. When it looks like the gay people are about to get shot, Peter steps in front and says, no, shoot me, and then evangelizes his way out of the robbery. It goes to show you how boring it is to be evangelized to, that an armed robber would rather be like, oh, no, I don't want to... I actually don't want to be near you. I'll just, I'm going to go ahead and take another hostage. No, I'm a Christian, and I want you to shoot. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I'm, just, I'm on a bunch of meth right now, and you're really unpleasant to be around. I'm the second least pleasant person in this room to be around right now, and I'm threatening to murder everyone. The Indian guy behind the counter is like, he's right, you know. It's actually a lot better. <laughs> At least if he shoots me in the face, I'll be dead. I won't have to watch Ray Comfort videos. <laughs> you get it? Because that's what they sound like. <laughs> Got a future in stand-up comedy. I, I think know. so. I think so, sir. So he gets distracted by the cops coming out. And because the, because the guy's white and he's holding a gun to someone's head, the cops don't do anything. Right. <laughs> That's probably why they didn't make the character black. <laughs> no, they shoot him on the way out of the door. You guys better back up. One of these lives doesn't matter, so go ahead and open fire. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize they were in Cleveland. All right, so, so and, and then, of course, um, yeah, so Peter comes out from behind with a can of spinach, guys. You get it? Because somebody said Popeye earlier in the movie. Uh, and so now I didn't he's gotta... get it. I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so hard to make it through this 49 minutes. By the way, our conversation has now been going longer than the movie. Uh, that probably won't be true after the edit. But anyway, so he knocks the fucking robber out uh, with, a, with a can of spinach. And then we cut back to Diana, who's just prayed for for Peter successfully, obviously she did it right. Right, and gets a text that's like, "Good job praying, everybody." Again, how you know it's a mass text? Can you imagine being in a meeting and you come out of your meeting, and you're like, "Take your phone off airplane mode." It's like, "Quick, everyone pray, Peter's gonna get shot." And you're like, "Who the fuck's Peter?" Good job, everybody. All right, fine. I gotta text him and be like, "Hey, man, don't don't include me on that oh, please. kind of thing anymore." <laughs> So now, if, if if you're curious what Diana was doing while she was praying, after being shown the hate speech videos for uh, by by Peter earlier in the day, she's gone home and is now like addictively watching Ray Comfort videos the way I watch you porn. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. She's she is doing what everyone who listens to this podcast does with Intelligence Squared debates. 
but she's doing it with crazy Ray Comfort yes, exactly. videos. <laughs> he's just like, well, listen, I'm going to play some games on Armor Games. I'm going to listen to Sam Harris beat up William Lane Craig in the background. <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a great one. That's a great one. <laughs> yeah. But instead, but instead, I just want to hear an Australian man bother teenagers. Right. Just like, you know, I've been thinking about it. All right, right. So you, you know how, you know how sometimes, right? You know how you're a murderer? I'm not. I'm not a murderer. You know how you're a murderer then? Look at this book. There's this, in the third montage, we're now on the third montage. Yes. It's where he's basically telling people to tell him that they're going to hell. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's like, so the book says you're going to hell. You're going to hell. And everyone, it's so edited. Everyone's like, I guess the book says I'm going to hell. And he's like, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, last words were I'm going to hell. So. Right. And the guy goes, well, how would I not go to hell? And he's like, well, you take a magic, magic spell, and you wave it around your head. And the woman who is a Christian is like, listen, Christ is my Lord and Savior. That's all I need, which I don't know, but, but sure. And he's like, no, 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 that's not enough. It's not enough. You got you to gotta read it. Spot him in, spot him in. Does whatever a spot it can. I get it. He does whatever a spider can. Yeah, Uncle Ben died for your sins. I get it. I get Uncle Ben died because he didn't stop the guy. This is the worst. Well, and I just want to go back to my music festival. Oh my god, these poor people. And then okay, so now his argument the third time around, the the, the big the big reveal here is that he's getting he's asking and and you've you I'm sure you everybody listening to this has been through this with a Christian before where where they say have you ever lied? Have you ever have you ever stolen everything? Anything? Have you ever used the Lord's name in vain? And then they're like, "Well, see right by your own admission, you're a lying, stealing blasphemer." And the reason, the only reason I bring this specific thing up, because it's just one of the dumbass things that he says in there, is that when somebody doesn't understand what he means by saying the Lord's name in vain, he gives him the example by saying, you know, like you say, oh my G-O-D. Like the guy has to spell the fucking word out like a nine-year-old. Right, when exactly. He's saying, like he doesn't oh want his God. toddler to know he's going to the zoo. Right. And his toddler <laughs> is the creator of the universe. <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't want to make him mad, right? But I want to F U C K Y O U in the A S S. Yeah? Now, God doesn't know how to spell very good because he's not real, right? And his vision's based on movement, so maybe if we hold real, real still, God won't see these two sinners, yeah, when he comes by with his magic laser guns. Yeah? Starts frying people up, like laser guns. Shrimp on the barbie. You know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. And everyone reacts everyone reacts to that like and it's interesting to watch on the one hand it's like this is bad because I understand this is for a minister, but there's no, and for a ministry, but on the other hand there's no question that everyone didn't walk away from those conversations more atheistic than when yeah, they right, started out. Right. Everyone who was on the other end of that camera if we'd done a post interview and just been like uh, how much do you believe in God now? They'd be like, "Oh fuck, man, I'm done with it." <laughs> I am done with it. Be on that motherfucker's side? No thanks. No shit. Oh, here, take this little yellow lowercase t I always wear. My grandma gave it to me some shit before she died. Whatever. <laughs> now, this the third YouTube uh, montage also had my least favorite moment in the entire movie. I thought the most offensive one where, where he's trying to establish that you're uh, a, a, a blasphemer and a murderer and a, and a rapist or whatever he's trying to do. Um, one of the things he's trying—he's trying to use the thing where Jesus says, "If you ever look at a woman and want to fuck her, it's the same as fucking her, so you might as well rape her because you're going to get arrested anyway, or whatever it is that he's—he's he's trying to—he's trying to make that point. So he's asking all these people, like, have you ever just sitting next to Jesus on a couch at a frat party, looking at a drunk girl? <laughs> you listen, man. You might as well. You're going to get in trouble anyways. Come on, I'll—I'll—I'll I'll, I'll go sit in front of the door. I'll go sit in front of the door. <laughs> The G the Jesus, Jesus date wingman. rape scenario. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so he's asking everybody, have you ever lusted after a woman? Now keep in mind that most of the people he's talking to are gay and have already told him that. So he he turns to this gay guy that has already told him he's gay and says, Have you ever lusted after a woman? And the guy just stares at him. He goes, No, because I'm gay. And 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 then and then Ray goes, Oh, well, have you ever lusted after a vomit swallow? Man, and the guy's like, "Yes, because I'm gay." That I, I think that might have been the most offensive moment in the entire fucking movie to me. I see. To me, it was all it was all so absurd, and everyone 
if I felt like anyone gave any shits about what Ray Comfort said in this movie, right, I think yeah. it would have hurt me more. <laughs> but everyone reacted like, you ever have a toddler walk up to you at a family gathering and they're like, I'm a spaceman. And you're like, you are a spaceman, Ryan. What's going on? But my little cousin Owen thinks he's a DJ all the time. Uh -huh. He comes up to you. He's three years old now. He comes up and he goes, I'm a DJ. And you go, are you a DJ, Owen? That's how people treat Ray Comfort. <laughs> Ray Comfort could immediately transition into being like, I'm a DJ. Did you know I'm a DJ? Yeah. <laughs> Spinning some records. You hear that? Ribbity, ribbity, ribbity. Huh? Ricky Rare, Ricky Rare, Ricky Rare. And everyone would have been like, you sure are, Ray. You sure are. I'm going to hell and you're a DJ. So that, that, I guess that's why this movie, these sequences don't upset me so much because it's just people being like, well, no, because I'm gay. I, I, I've lusted after a man. Yeah. You have, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. I have, pal. All right. Little Gonna get my microphone closer to your face now. <laughs> closer. Can you smell Touching it? your lips. <laughs> Touching lips with the microphone. All right. So, and well, okay. I'm sorry. I may have spoken too soon about the most offensive scene in this movie because I forgot that we're also moving into after this montage. Now, uh, uh, Peter has just saved the gay people with his can of spinach or whatever, and they invite right. him to dinner. So we go to dinner. At a yeah. restaurant that has nothing but hot sauce. That's <laughs> right. the, at, the theme at, of the restaurant. At TGI Friday. Fridays. They take them to a not nice version of TGI oh, right, Fridays. right, yes. Uh... And at that dinner, the most offensive thing in the movie to me happens. He does that, here's a hundred dollar tip, oh, but it's oh actually a Jesus comfort thing. Fuck and you. Fuck Fuck those people. As people, everyone here, I think, at some point has worked in the service industry. Uh -huh. Way too long. Fuck you. Yes. There is no better way for me to put the fluids that were once in me into your beverages and or food <laughs> than to do that to me. There's, you could be like, hey, man, can I suck your dick? And you have less chance of having my cum inside your mouth than if you give me that $100 thing with the Jesus pamphlet on the back. I'm just letting you know. I'm letting you know you get my mouth babies. It's the fucking... And so, but the most offensive thing to me about this movie is the waitress is like... <laughs> Hilarious. Well, she even brings Thanks her other the waitress Jesus fan, uh, friend back later so they can get right. another one. She brings yeah. her, she's like, do that thing where you pretend to give me money <laughs> that I make nothing. so little already, <laughs> but it's actually just you telling me about your craziness. <laughs> Isn't that great? And the other girl's like, it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. It's the fucking worst. Sorry. But before that happens, before that happens, they go to dinner and they're talking and it's, it's, you're so, you think for two seconds it's going to be, a pleasant dinner with gay people. But of course it can't be because, you know, they're not humans. Right. So he mentions he's a Christian. They're like, why would you do that? And again, like no one who isn't a Christian could ever be kind. And he goes, oh, well, I'm a Christian. And again, everyone reacts to that word like rapist. Right. He's like, well, why would you do that? Oh, because I'm a rapist. Oh, oh, horrible. Why would we invite you to dinner? Right. That's the worst. They're like, they, and they, then, they're, they're like they, they've never, they, they're like, he might as well have said, I'm, I'm a radioactive trilobite. Oh, we've never seen one of those, and that's scary. They, they, they actually say, I guess this is going to be the first time we've ever had dinner with a Christian. 80% of this fucking country is Christian. Yeah, to be fair, those guys are from Norway. Oh, I those see. From very small village in Norway. Their English is fantastic. They were just yes. traveling. They flew into the middle of bumfuck nowhere. They were, their one trip was going to be to that gas station, and they were just like, well, I guess we better take him to dinner. Yeah. Oh, and so the gay guy, so the, the one of the gay guys is totally reasonably offended by the fact that he starts to prophetize to them. Right, he is starts totally... handing them pamphlets about how they're going to go to hell because they're gay. Right, and he's like, hey, uh, you know what? I don't think this is a good idea. We should leave. Um, I, don't, I don't really want to read any of your fucking literature. Mm -hmm. And and again, the argument this movie makes is like, but, 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 but we really like it when you read our literature. <laughs> it's like, I don't give a... Again, cry me a fucking river. Who gives a shit? And then he turns to his boyfriend and he's like, don't. Bring this home. Yeah, right. And not only does to he... To which the gay partner responds, oh, I'm, I'm probably not going to. It's, it's just... I'm just being nice. <laughs> I, just, I already ordered the cheese sticks, so... Yeah. Uh, so... You know. But not only... When he, when he says that, I love... It, this is the subtlety of this movie. He doesn't just kind of wave his hand towards the pamphlets or anything. He puts his finger on the pamphlet on the word God. 
on the right. pamphlet and says, do not bring this into our home. But this is after, again, he throws out some great arguments. He says, doesn't your book also say that shellfish is evil? And, right. and again, he's like, oh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but I'll get back to you. And apparently, by right. the way, this restaurant has a dish called the shellfish because the waitress walks by when he says that. She oh, goes, yeah. oh, yeah, that comes with a baked potato and glazed vegetables. Yes, yeah, the shellfish. Sitcom mishap, like, <laughs> ridiculous. They kept what, what? They just get someone. They knew someone who wrote the sitcom Two Broke Girls, and they were like, "Hey, is this, this is for you for free?" And Ray Comfort was like, "Thanks a lot. You get it." Oh, Skittles out in front of the camera. You get it because she's she was talking about the food, <laughs> not the Bible. We're not going to answer that question because we're crazy. Come on, cat. Get back to stuffing that Rubik's cube in my ass. <laughs> so they fucking. So then. Then they the the one reasonable member of that couple leaves, and they have a talking about Jesus montage. Yes, they do. And they have a talking about Jesus montage because there's nothing to say. Right. <laughs> so they have to have a montage. So it's just like making really good points, and the kid got nods. He nods because all these points are so great. He's witnessing to him. Oh, that's a good point right there. Maybe I don't like dudes. <laughs> witnessing Mount Tosner! I mean, like, the whole movie is about how to talk to gay people as a Christian, and then when you actually get to the point in the movie where he's a Christian talking to a gay person, yes, it's just a musical montage of, yeah, he's probably the... saying some pretty smart shit right now. That gay look guy looks pretty convinced, doesn't he? Get him a dessert that says, thanks, Peter, and chocolate sauce. Perfect. Yes. Oh, okay. God. It would be like it would be like if at the end of all the Rocky movies we just cut to a, a montage of someone watching and the guy being like, "Yeah, Rocky's doing pretty well." <laughs> oh yeah, yep. So it appears that he is much better at boxing than he was at the beginning of the movie, and he's won. Seems to be gaining he's strength. Won. And he's won. There you go. <laughs> Except for Rocky Five when it's a street fight. Oh yeah, the I'm best Uncle of the Bell. Rocky films. Oh, God. One more round. <laughs> That's the Rocky film. Ding, ding. <laughs> All right, so we end this incredibly. That movie horrible... got made on purpose. Yeah, right. <laughs> Someone gone. watched Rocky One and was like, "Yeah, this script is a good sequel." All right, sorry. So yeah, it's like someone describing Rocky. Yes, yeah, right. So, <laughs> and then they leave. Right, and then we go back to the comedy club for some more of that phenomenal comedy that we love so much. And I kind of thought of that comedy as sort of a metaphor because I was like, I get it. That watching this comedy is a little like being in hell, and I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> so maybe if I turn this off, it'll be like not being gay anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so bad, the worst. They go to a comedy club, and the guy, the host, apparently comes up and literally goes, "Well, we're gonna take a five minute break, and after that, we don't know who's coming up." <laughs> no idea. Uh, we're, we're does anyone want to come do some? Co this is supposed to be a professional comedy club, uh -huh. and the host just walks up and he's like, "We got nothing." Yeah, we got nothing. He doesn't just end the show, which is, by the way, I've worked comedy clubs. If someone doesn't show and you don't have a closer, good night, everybody. Yeah, that's the end of a fucking show. You don't just go like, "Well, we don't have a closer, so are any of you comedians?" Right. <laughs> Excuse me, does anyone here know how to fly a plane? Yeah, right. Is right. there a comedian in the house? Is there a comedian? <laughs> and and by the way, so, there wasn't a comedian on the stage before that. The, the, we get it's the same goddamn comedian that starts the movie out, the friend comedian or whatever. In he his closing part of his fucking act apparently is him doing Willy Wonka or Robert De Niro as Willy Wonka, which is basically him doing a Robert De Niro voice and going, hey, I'm Willy Wonka. Hey, Charlie, I'm Willy Wonka. He's do Also, he's doing an impersonation. He's not doing De Niro. He is doing uh, Kevin Spacey's impersonation of De Niro. Yes. <laughs> he's not doing... Because Kevin Spacey does that you, you thing. I, that's, that's Kevin Spacey's thing. And he saw it because he's not allowed to watch any of the movies that Robert De Niro's actually ever been in. <laughs> so he's just like, well, Robert De Niro, I mean... If I saw Raging Bull, I would be crying under the bed for years. So, I hear he says the word you a lot. Are you ready? You. You. Italian-Americans, am I right? They're all going to burn. False idols. So, it's fucking, it's fucking nuts. And by the way, I just want to point out, when the host comes up and announces that they don't have another comedian, uh -huh. there's one guy with a weird twirly mustache who just is in the audience and goes, 
What the fuck is this shit? Right, I want my money back. Just the one member of the audience who reacts appropriately is just like, this is terribly run. I feel like you should have thought about this more. <laughs> so now Diana shows up while this is all going on saying like, hey, tell me more about this Jesus thing. I think I kind of get it. He died for our sins, right? Is that how it goes? And right. uh, of course, Peter's like, uh, 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 filling her in on all this crazy stuff she's apparently never heard of before while the host is trying to, uh, you know, browbeat somebody into coming up and telling jokes on his stage. Right, exactly. We'll give you nachos! It's all yeah. in the background, too. So you just hear a desperate man begging in the back. It really puts a, a damper on their conversations in the background. There's just a guy like, all right, come on, whoever gets... Listen, I'll drill a hole in the men's room stall, and I'll, you put your dick in there, and you will take it out, and you'll be a changed man. Anybody? Anyway, so Jesus, and that's when I had a realization about this movie. The story of this movie is supposed to be about the struggle of a Christian impressionist to overcome stage fright. Yes, apparently. That is the subplot of this movie. Yeah, they, they, they sort of kind of tossed in once at the, in the first scene and once in the last scene. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. When he gets up to do his comedy, <laughs> this is <laughs> this was one of the most amazing moments. First of all, okay, <laughs> apparently they could not find an audience that could act like an audience for this movie because, like, I, I couldn't possibly do this justice. Uh, how just how bad and in unison and terrible this fucking uh, audience was, and how bad his joke was, and how much they laughed at his bad joke. So if you don't mind, I'm going to pause for a second to play you the audio from this moment in the movie. Keep in mind, this is right after people are screaming out, we want our money back, oh, this is bullshit, and throwing shit at the stage. Our hero walks out on the screen, and he says this. It was, it's funny because it's true. He deserved the Oscar for Inside Man, so they gave it to him for Gladiator. <laughs> oh, Hollywood. <laughs> I mean, that's the fun. It's like, oh, a man did go to the beach. I get it. I get it. It's oh. the fu It's the fucking worst. Oh, my God. So anyway, yeah, so give you an idea how terrible that is. And then, of course, Diana gets called away by cancer brother or something so she has to run very quickly yeah and so she's she drives and she runs out of gas and oh as she's driving she drives by um poor man's michael chiklis who i'm again, uh, yeah. again very w glad to w find w out a wrestler on meth absolutely yes yeah. uh -huh. right exactly it's, it's not actually um michael chiklis uh <laughs> and he's like he is hitchhiking in the most aggressive way possible so if that was supposed to be Later on, we're going to find out something about that hitchhiker, and I'm just going to refer back to that. He's hitchhiking. He might as well be holding a sign just like, looking for rapes. Because <laughs> he's just like, both thumbs out, like, go, let me in your car. Giant, and then lock the doors. convict looking guy, middle of the night, dark road. I don't know where the fuck she is. It's just like between the comedy club and the hospital is goddamn, you know, uncharted engine territory or something. But she's in the middle of fucking nowhere and there's this gigantic dude walking by. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Basically just stay, stepping out in front of cars and trying to grab them. Right, yeah. Give me, come here, car. <laughs> come here to me. You my car now. <laughs> so she drives by, and then she runs out of gas and stops to make a phone call. Now, here's the thing. We're about to find out that she is actually stopped on a railroad track. Uh -huh. yeah, you, you can't do that. You can't, you can't, you can't just run out of stop. gas There's... and land on a railroad track. It's impossible. It doesn't happen. There's always those things. They put those things there. The ding, ding, ding. They put those there so you can't just be like, I guess I'll park right here on this bumpy road. This bumpy road has a ladder on it. It must be trying to climb to somewhere. All right, she now just I just want to point this out. 
I, I just want to point this out because otherwise we're going to get emails. All, you fancy New Yorkers think that those are only about 30 percent of American railway crossings actually have the arms. So, like, yeah, most most railroad crossings don't actually have Look the at arms. the rest of America. They're so fucking, fucking stupid. Crazy, right? People. But here's the thing. You deserve to get hit by trains. You're right. Yeah, exactly. But they at least have a rise and a fall. It's not like, you know, they're not invisible. So, right. You can feel it, right? Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't know about the rest of America. I come from New York where we try to prevent people from getting hit by trains. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on down in Georgia. In Georgia, are they just like, here's a parking spot. And they out yellow, outline it in yellow. <laughs> This is great. Handicapped parking. <laughs> pre parking. Well, if you get parking. hit, it won't matter. <laughs> so she parks on these train tracks, and she makes this phone call where she's like, Peter, I've been thinking about what you said, and I really want to talk to you about it. And then the hitchhiker guy, who apparently is also the Flash... Because her car drove for another, like, six minutes without him. Yeah. So I can only assume that, like, the six million dollar man, it was like, nah, 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 <laughs> just, like, sped after her. <laughs> was like, I could tell using my Christ sense that that woman's going to be in danger and park on railroad tracks. Yeah. So he's he's banging on the window, and, she, and this is the scene from the beginning again where she's like, ah, nah, nah, nah. and so he smashes the window and drags her out just as a train Hits the car, which again we do not see because no. this movie does not have the budget to hit not a even car close. with a train. No, they don't even have the budget to like drive a train near a car like they did in Fireproof. They just yeah, have they like, don't stock have, they don't have the budget to coming. drive a train <laughs> <laughs> and like a sound effect of a crash. Like right. basically, they have the budget that like if we had to put a train crash into this show. It would have been like on the same budget they had. So yeah. Oh yeah, Ray, Ray Comfort just did all the foley sounds himself, just <laughs> him alone, just being like, "Oh yeah, here comes a train, clippity 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 clippity, kaplish, eh, hits into your car, I'm a car, oh no, run 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 run, run 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 run, oh can't get away, clippity 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 clippity." Good job, Kirk. I've almost sold it. Don't take it out. I can tell the top layer's done. Gives me a tickle in my tummy. <laughs> so she gets hit. She gets out of the train, and they're both harmed, even though they don't get hit by a train. Right? Yes. Which I thought was strange. I'm like, how are they hurt? Did they slip and fall <laughs> on their way? Because they didn't get hit by a train. If they got hit by a train, and he has like neck hurt, and she has a broken arm, they're fucking Bruce Willis from Unbreakable. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so they somehow got hurt. Maybe flying pieces of car hit them or something. But we they both go to, to the hospital, mm -hmm. and then he listens to her voicemail. Peter listens to her voicemail after he's done fucking killing it with his Willy Wonka impersonation. <laughs> and it turns out that she was a lesbian the entire time! Oh my god, yes. The woman that he was showing gay hate YouTube clips to at work turns out to have been a lesbian. That's the twist ending of this movie. We see pictures of her with her girlfriend, and she's decided now that she's watched all these Ray Comfort videos, she loves the dick like a good little lesbian should. She loves the D, and she's not gay anymore. And by the way, the question that came to me, this was a bummer moment for me because I'm a human being who's not a crazy person. I was just like, oh my God, that poor other woman. She's right. going to go visit her girlfriend and be like, oh, my God, are you okay? And she's going to be like, I'm straight now because Jesus magic. And she's going to be like, oh, who works? Never mind. Oh, my God. And so, like, and, and while he's listening to this, um, this voicemail message about how she used to be a lesbian, but now she's straight because he, he, he Jesus'd her. What we see, we first, we see her, like, we're looking at her desk, so we see the pictures of her with her lesbian girlfriend. Ew. And then... We see her open Bible, and it's open to First Corinthians, and it's the the passage. This is the passage about you know neither homosexuals nor fornicators nor whatever, and like fornicator and homosexual are highlighted, underlined, and circled, and we stay on that for I think I counted it out. It's like nine seconds that that's on screen that we're looking. Well, they got to let all the page. audience sound that word out. Yeah, you know, exactly. Everyone, in the, everyone like who's watching that movie has to be like, right there. Yeah. Fornicators <laughs> for a minute for for formanish maters. <laughs> Farm it. Sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. Do you know sweet potatoes aren't allowed into heaven? <laughs> no, wait, wait, good. They're keeping it up there. Fornicate. Oh, right. Oh, I, I get it. That one. Me and everyone else who isn't a crazy person. Right. <laughs> so, now, just in case you didn't catch 
the, tr- the metaphor we were going for with the train, which is even when big, crazy guys come slamming at your fucking window, sometimes they're trying to help. Just right. like Ray Comfort is a big, crazy guy slamming a microphone against people's faces. He's just trying to help. But in case you didn't get that, We get it explained to us four times in the last 60 seconds of this fucking movie. One of which is in a news report where she's like, I'm a news reporter. A good Christian was trying to save a lesbian woman. She didn't want to be saved, but sometimes when you don't want to be saved, it's better to be get saved. I'm a news reporter. (laughs) For News McNews reporter, I'm not someone's cousin news reporter (laughs) and speaking of someone's cousin so during this news report she after she explains the metaphor she says i spoke with the uh with the hero's cousin earlier now keep in mind that this could have been like an interview with the girl it could have been an interview with michael chiklis or poor man's michael chiklis uh the the thing from fantastic four but for some reason they insert this cousin character into the movie so that it can be the cousin that talked to the guy who pulled her out of the train and is now relaying to the news reporter what he said. Right. I just want it to be one step removed. I'm talking to the hero's cousin's sister's <laughs> right. ex-roommate. Why? Oh, Amber? Yeah, no, we we went to, uh, we lived together for a little while after college. What happened to her sister's cousin, something? Yeah. I haven't heard about that. <laughs> I'm a news reporter. <laughs> All right, so I, I, now obviously this this movie is not going to you know win any Oscars, but hey, this movie wasn't designed to win Oscars. So I guess the really important question is whether it succeeded in what it did intend. So Eli Heath, after watching this film, do you feel the urge to berate a fag? <laughs> is that is it bubbling up inside of you? Yeah, I mean, my across the hallway neighbors play their music pretty loud, and they're they're both dudes and they're married. So I mean, yeah, I'm gonna go over and ask them about. <laughs> To read various passages out of Harry Potter back to me to prove that Dumbledore's real. Better start witnessing. Better look that up. Exactly, dude. And this movie, I just want this movie ends super sharply, immediately into an infomercial. This movie Mm -hmm. takes no moments to be like the movie's over. The movie's like great. So enough of that shit. Anyways, (laughs) buy even more shit from us. Here's we have a, a whole DVD set. Um, you remember that montage where he was so great and so smart? That's what you're going to be like. Give us five, seven thousand dollars. Who knows? Christian stuff is so expensive. We're going to send you a thing. You'll have this movie, which is still a piece of shit. And then you'll just go around and tell people they're wrong. And they'll be like, oh, my God, I never thought of it that way. The way no one has ever done ever. Right. Ugh. You know what it looked like? You ever remember at the beginning of Disney movies where it used to be that? And now the previews are feature presentation. That's what it looks like at the end of this movie. It's like, and now, a crazy Christian trying to sell you more fucking crazy Christian propaganda. I mean, they don't even let the credits start rolling or anything. It's like no, the not last at all. word of the movie is still being spoken, and the guy's just bumbling his way in going, like, buy more right. shit, buy more shit. It's, he pushes you in the front of her. get married now. Did you know that shit? Did you, yeah. When we filmed that, they couldn't get married, and now they can. We're in fucking trouble, guys. We need more of your money. <laughs> And, the by the way, it's right here at the end. My favorite part of the entire – well, my favorite part of the experience of watching this movie happened at the end. I decided to check on IMDb um, to find out a couple names because they don't tell you entire characters' names for uh-huh. most of the movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, so on IMDb, I learned it was Diana, and I also learned that – you remember the two murdered lesbians that were in killed the in an elevator? Yeah. yeah. They, were, they were billed as – Elevator Girl 1 and Elevator Girl 2. And even better, the evil principal from Breakfast Club who murdered them was billed under Mean Elevator Guy. Yes. Mean, mean Elevator Guy. Elevator. He's a murderer, and they called him Mean. That was, yes. That, <laughs> that was his role. Mean. That's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, the best is the fact that under the special thanks, Christina Applegate's name appeared. I noticed that as well. So if you <laughs> needed another reason not to like her, there's one for you right there. The good news is that it's mathematically impossible for the next movie that we review to be less enjoyable than this one unless you have to get bitten in the nuts to see it. So until then, Eli, thanks for suffering alongside us once again. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. <laughs>